like I had, to, I had to bruise feeling for a second. And then the second guy came in with the little Max with the big banana clip, the red tape around it. I don't think I ever forget that. And boom, then that's when I put my hands up. She stood here with it this far away from my face. The, the end of a gun was right here. And I was like this. And he went around that way. And there was a couple people here. Maria was over there. Those two were over here, right? I think it was me. Yeah, they were in the back. And they stand up. I was right by the back. I was too. I thought it was a game. I was going down so slow. I'm like, well, okay, I guess it's real. <laughs> yeah, so, so and, and, and at first it was just those two. And then a couple of seconds later, three or four more came in. Apparently they were going to run aside and went through the other doors. And it was all over what? I put this doorway here. The lease for this, I leased it, and I called this the sanctuary. This building and the second building next door, I also put that hole through the wall too. So I made these two buildings are separate from that building. That's a restaurant with a business license. And this building here, I rented it and I leased it as church. I have a 501c3 religious organization, nonprofit paperwork that is based out of California. I moved here. I probably could have transferred it here and paid a couple of dollars if I wanted to, but I just left it there and I incorporated here, same name, and called it a subsidiary of that company. And trust me, there are plenty of corporations that do that. Half the corporations in this area are really based in Delaware. And they use the Delaware tax paperwork. You can still have their business and still be physically located in the other state if you want. And that's what I did with this. So this is a subsidiary of my nonprofit in California. And I've already been battling the city about that. Not the state. The state didn't complain about it. The city did a few weeks ago. Whatever. <laughs> you know, I I called. But myself. it's recent. It's recent that they're yeah, they're on that. It all started on February 28th. And this move that they did, I'm going to skip a couple things. This move they did was to take my cameras because I filed a federal lawsuit with the, with the, uh, against the city police department for them coming here and intimidating my congregation. And in the course of that, the city police department filed a false um, police report. They said that they came here on February 28th because there was a fight outside and there was 30 people outside. Well, I got cameras. When I read that, I went back to my camera and I downloaded that to show that there was two people standing out here having a civil conversation when 30 police officers showed up. Those two ran in back in the building and then they chased and the police made everybody leave. And I described that incident to the federal judge, Judge uh, Sheridan, I said that, that was, they just committed a fraud to the court. They just submitted a, a fraudulent account of what happened that day. And here, I made a, I made a YouTube of it and gave him the link so he could read it himself, to watch it himself. You know, and now they come read, and really the only thing they took was my DVR, was my camera system. You know, like I'll show you where they took the camera system from, but. I mean, I admit to everybody, everybody knows I smoke weed. I don't care, who doesn't know I smoke weed? And I share. But they apparently had a month long investigation trying to catch me selling something to somebody. And they didn't catch me selling nothing to nobody because I don't sell nothing, I sell turkey burgers. I share weed. Um, if there's any sales going on, it's not going on here. Apparently, as part of their investigation, they found this one kid outside selling weed. Um, again, that happens, that happens outside of Burger King. You go to the train station, it happens at the train station all day. You go to the train station, you can buy weed at the train station, you can buy heroin, you can buy Xanax, you can buy anything you want at the train station. I can't patrol my streets out here. You know? You're not, you're not associated with that guy? Who's, uh, he comes here sometimes. That's the crazy thing. He does come here. And he was locked in, and the, when they raided us, he was walking by, he stood there for a few minutes, watching it, and when he went to walk off, one of the police officers here recognized him, and they chased him down and arrested him right out here. And he happened to be the same kid that they say 
that he, I mean, I don't, I, I don't even know. That's what they said, that he sold them a couple packages outside. Again, nothing got sold in here. And I'm not a dummy. When I first opened this, I asked my staff, I told them, listen, there's gonna be scooping. People are gonna be looking at me. You gotta be careful, don't do nothing stupid. Blah, 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 blah. And as far as I'm concerned, none of them do. No one sells any weed here. Well, I don't care about sharing. I, I really don't. You know, if you turn around and look on the wall right here, that's like my favorite saying. <laughs> you know, that's my favorite saying. I got the Ten Commandments right there on the wall. <laughs> so for them to show up with a SWAT team like I'm such a radical, Exist. I mean, the most they would have got maybe is a bomb thrown at them. You know, that's about it. <laughs> no, you were fucking nah. sharing it. Yeah. You know? how, long, so how long are people in here for? Sometimes until 5 in the morning. I sleep here. That's my bed. So if I'm up, and sometimes I kick everybody up. But that's where I sleep. That opens up. There's no bed. The door closes. John, the cook here, he's the same way. For the old guys here, we decide we're done with it tonight. Everybody's got to go home. Go home. People knock on the door at 8 in the morning sometimes too. They want to come and chill. I have wireless here. People, I, I always I tell people all the time too, this is also Wheat Bucks. Instead of Starbucks, it's Wheat Bucks. Why don't you call your home and get it those over your castle? No, I, I, I formed it as a church and that was my original plan. And I don't know, just because they're harassing me, I'm not going to change. <laughs> you know, but I considered it harassment until the other day. Now it's like, whoa, they full out assaulted me. Like, that was an invasion. You know, in fact, it was the second time. The first, they did it like a week ago too, but they just came charging in the backyard and looked around. And then they left. I have a video of that. And again, these are the videos I've been posting online showing the police doing stuff like this. And that's why they came and took my, 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 my uh, DVR. Um, they showed up a couple times and just stood outside. Like 20 of them ordered everybody to leave. And, you know, like, okay. And they're threatening to come inside. And I have a whole bunch of peaceful people in here. And these are people outside with guns. And they're ordering everybody to come outside. So it's like, okay. Do I say, hell no, ah, fuck you. And invite a big chaos with them arresting people and charging. Or do I tell everybody, look, the police are here. Just leave. And that's what I did a couple times. And then I went over and filed the complaint with the federal authorities. Since then, they have not done that. They've come and they people tickets, they started bothering people, they started hanging around. I never had that all year. And all of a sudden, I have all these police threat, you know, hanging around. The state people and stuff start to stop coming because, you know, they got jobs and pensions to worry about. They're upset. Are they upset because there's, you know, marijuana stuff going on in here? I think so, but I think it's also me and my outspokenness and Guard the law type thing, and it's weed, it's marijuana. And see, and I say things like, you know, well, you guys hear all the things I say, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, um, and these are these are the, you know, I guess I, you know, I'll admit I poke people and I irritate people. I've been doing it my whole life, though. It's nothing new to me, but it's new that okay, I moved to Trenton and now I'm poking people who don't like me. Poke, I'm writing things in the my column that some people aren't like me. Okay, and then I, I located myself directly across the street from City Hall. And I remember when people were asking, like, dude, why did you locate there? I like, couldn't find somewhere in front of the state house. <laughs> you know, like, this is the next best place. And I have no beef personally with the people at City Hall. Until recently, I didn't even catch any of their names. That building represents government to me. That's it. Like, it wasn't specifically Mayor Jackson or any of the city council members. That building represents government. I could have did this in my hometown from Sicklerville. You know, there's buildings in Sicklerville I could have rented. Who would have came to Sicklerville if it was some guy who opened up a weed spot? I mean, a, not a weed spot, a cannabis temple in Sicklerville. Nobody would have showed up for that. Nobody would have cared about it. The fact that I did it in the state capitol across the street from City Hall is why the press is covered there. So, I mean, Wall Street Journal, Fox News, I mean, Fox News covering things, you know, like, the only reason Fox and Friends, the only reason why I was on, the, on those shows is because it's in the state capitol across the street from City Hall.
I call it my cannon blossom courtyard. At night time, we have a fire, a fire pit right here. People are, are, are sitting here, minding their business, talking to the fire. And like I said, the other night, Sunday night, they came charging through the side door. And there were like 20 people here. Right here on the stage, we were doing comedy night that night. So there's all these people were outside doing comedy night. And bam, all of a sudden, there's police officers all on their faces. So when I showed you the video, everybody like left. Like, that's scary, especially if they're, they're not regulars. All of a sudden, the police were here. Like, oh, like, oh, shoot, shoot, they left. Oh, um, they like killed the night. They didn't arrest anybody, they didn't do anything. They just kind of just charged in here. But this is what I said to the, to the federal authorities. They're just harassing me. They're trying to intimidate by the people from coming here. And this last thing was like, whoa, they even arrested me. <laughs> My weed mobile has been parked back there for the last month and a half. They came and took the wheel. They stole it. They stole it. They're picking this. They're, I can show you my uh, the search warrant and everything. It doesn't list that on there. And they seized it. And today, Detective Starkey announced that he was doing an asset forfeiture petition on the wheel mobile and our delivery car. Someone donated us a delivery car a few weeks ago. So again, People are doing this because I'm, they're taking me seriously as a church, as a as an organization of good. So someone donated me a delivery car for food delivery, and they took it. I have no idea why they took it, but again, we will be able to me. It's sentimental because of the whole, I had it in California, I paid it in California, it meant all this to me. But apparently it's symbolic to them, and that's why they're taking it know it's wrong. Everybody you know knows somebody. I mean, I don't know you personally. But I know every one of you knows someone who smokes marijuana on a regular basis. Every one of you knows someone who, uh, you know, whose kid smokes marijuana, I mean, whose grandmother smokes marijuana. Like, it's, it's there. It's, it's not going anywhere. We all acknowledge the laws wrong. And half the states now it is legal one way or the other for medical use, which is supposed to be here too. The state of New Jersey is for medical use. Three of the people who were detained the other day had medical cards. There are a lot of medical patients who come here. Um, uh, the one guy, they accused him of having a fake one, and he had to go down to the police station, the whole nine yards, and sat there for a couple hours before they let him go. Um, that's because on the back of it they have a strip where you swipe it and said that they can tell it's legal. So they didn't accuse it of being fake here and took him down to the police station. And after a couple hours, the state police guy with his equipment, because the city is threatened, doesn't happen. So the state police guy swiped it and said it was real. So then they let him go. They actually said we were make them. Yeah, it's, yeah, like, alright. I'm, I'm, I'm barely able to do anything. I'm going to make have a, some type of counterfeit machine. But yeah, they did accuse me of making fake medical cards. We don't even have chairs that match. <laughs> <laughs> but again, I just wanted to have this press conference to show you, to say my side of the story. The heroin wasn't mine. Um, again, the, 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 the building, the, that, that, fan, there's the motor right there, it, it burned out or something a couple days ago when we were trying to get it fixed on the cheap and uh, one of the guys got accused of the propazine or however you say it, I don't even know the name of it, how you say, how you say it, parenthesis, when they told me that I was being charged, I didn't know what it was, like what, what is that, huh? It took him a couple seconds to explain it to me before I realized it, and I still didn't know where it came from. And so my girlfriend, who's also the owner, part owner of this, then she said, oh, that was mine. And she has a prescription for it. So at some point, during the course of this prosecution, she'll show her prescription, and show her this is her bottle, and that'll be switched too. So it's still just feed. And again, because it was over 50 grams, I mean, that's the charge they give everybody. We have over 50 grams of sand with intent to distribute. So that's where that came from. No sales. They didn't have any sales. They would love to have said in the paper, 
where we got to be man on a couple of undercover hand-to-hand -hand sales. And all the years that I've been out here, all the times that I've had police action at me, they have never got that on me. Never, not one time. What's up with the uh, fortified premises charge? This is fake. Because I had a camera, they call it food. That's what makes it fortified. I didn't. That, that's the booby trap, the camera. Well, I don't know <laughs> where they said booby trap. Some I did notice when I was reading the articles that one, one or two articles said booby trap, and one or two said fortified. I think the fortification comes from the cameras. But again, I told you what I think happened why they came and got my cameras because I was videotaping them. <laughs> Every time they came in here harassing me, I had a videotape of it. You know, it's just like these these towns and counties all over the place where people are getting these uh, body cams, and then the officers cut them off when they're actually on the, out there. They cut them off. Well, they couldn't cut my cameras off, so they came and got them. You know? And I don't see. I can show you the, the search warrant. I don't see anywhere in the search warrant it says they to seize that equipment. Um, same thing with my van. My van's not even listed on there. And I know from past experiences dealing with the legal system, in order for them to do a vehicle, they have to have a search warrant specifically for the vehicle. They not only, I don't know if they searched it, because I was, I was in handcuffs somewhere else, but they definitely took it. They broke that lock over there. This property actually right here is actually not mine, but I asked the people if I could use it to have like events and stuff. And they said if I put insurance on it, I could. So I put insurance on it. And I put my van back there. So this inside the fence is all part of the property, all part of the lease. That is actually not my property. But the owners of it said if I put insurance on it, I could have events there and I could have things here. So I did that. And now the thing is that they just broke the lock over there, came in, they took the van. The van had nothing to do with anybody. And one of symbolic things, trying to get you know, this. How many paid employees do you have? Four, five, and then there's a whole bunch of people volunteer around. Yeah. Yeah. Terry right there. back here. I don't think I've ever given Terry any money, but Terry comes here all the time. Yeah, there's, 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 there's a few others like that that come. They spend hours, they, they, they do things. Terry, for instance, is always cooking up the backyard. I come here sometimes. This has become their little cultural mecca or whatever. Yeah, it's something to do. There's a few kids here because I have, uh, you didn't see it, there's a little sound booth in there. And I have this one computer in this corner here. I have dedicated to them and their music. I'm not really into music. I listen to music. But I'm not into making music and things like that. But there's a few kids here. Now that I've given them the opportunity to use my computers and all that stuff, they're sitting there making records and making beats and everything else. Again, they're not out on the street shooting people. You know, like, if I can get 15 or 20 young kids off the streets, maybe they won't get hit by a straight bullet. You know, the little 16 year old girl that got shot uh, a couple days ago. They should be looking for them guys. Instead, they had 20 some cops here for me. And again, whether you smoke marijuana or not, you can't say I'm a violent guy or I'm promoting anything that's uh, violence. It's all about peace and love. In fact, when you first come through the door, it says peace and love over the door. You know, like, whatever. I bailed my uh, property to, to let his group, there's another group here, have clothing giveaways. Food drives here. We had a Christmas thing here. There's a few other things. I mean, it's easy to say we just, oh, there's a bunch of pies over there smoking weed. No, I have a whole lot of like socially conscious issues that, that I can talk about that I support. Yeah. Um, there was a lady from some shelter in Pennsylvania who had heard that I was doing that. Like, when she's at a shelter in Pennsylvania, she came over here and sponsored the, a homeless drive a couple weeks ago. Um, yeah, you know, and they came and brought most of the food here, and then I donated some of my food. The last time a lady showed up with, what, a hundred hot dogs? I said, you can be out of those hundred hot dogs in like a few minutes. I went and spent my 300 bucks. I got uh, $200 worth of hot dogs and hamburgers and rolls and all that, and gave it away. I didn't expect a dollar back, you know? 
and the police are treating me like I'm a negative. They, they're totally wrong. Totally wrong. And, who, and, and who's complaining about Because I noticed that the <laughs> store building is boarded up. And There's nobody to There's nobody here. There. There's nobody to complain. The, at nighttime, the U.S. federal building right there, they're closed, they're going, there's nobody there. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a guy who lives upstairs. You know, I don't even know if it's, it's in the record, but a pain. He's unofficially the nighttime security guy. He doesn't have to come outside or nothing. It's 50 bucks every couple days. On the weekend, they give him 50 bucks. And he's happy. He's a couple hundred dollars a month. He's not complaining. That's a state building also. They're gone at nighttime when they talk. The EPA is gone. The city hall is gone. There's no, it's a lie that they're getting a store on the corner. That's it. The, the statement that they said that they had complaints of a whole bunch of foot traffic or something. In, in a restaurant! People are supposed to come! <laughs> you know, they're supposed to come walking uh -huh. up. Like, that's the, it's all crap. It's all made up. It's all political. It's the politics of pop, Jersey style. In fact, that'd be my quote. This is just the politics of pop, Jersey style. <laughs> uh, I'm on the uh, Republican committee. District 9, a brick. Um, I think this is ridiculous. I think uh, Ed here is being targeted. I think there's two issues here. The marijuana issue and the church issue. He's got the paperwork for a church. He's got a constitutional right to have his church the way they see fit. It's guaranteed to us under the Constitution. He wants to open it for 24 hours. That's his right under the Constitution. And for the city to come in and tell him no, it's unconstitutional and it shouldn't be allowed to stand. Just on that issue alone, people should be up in arms. The weed issue, look, we're in a new age. Five states so far have legalized marijuana. And it's been going great. Just as the founders wanted. They wanted the states to experiment with different forms, different processes of democracy. That's how this nation was founded. Each individual state lives as it wants. They had no concept of an overbearing federal government, which is what we have now. Uh, Colorado, Washington, <coughs> Oregon, Alaska. And Washington, D.C. And Washington. And Washington State. Mm -hmm. They're not having any problems. They've legalized recreational marijuana. But even medicinal marijuana. I've got severe back problems. I'm in chronic pain. I can't get a prescription for, for marijuana or weed. It's not covered in the New Jersey. It's covered in the other states. You know, it, and marijuana is a schedule one. Come on. You know, I mean, we're talking from back in the 40s. It's a plant. It's not a narcotic. People are going to be disappointed, upset, whatever. But I've smoked weed for 40 years. Except when I was driving a truck. Then I couldn't because I had walk. Alcohol kills more people every year than marijuana. Smoking kills more people every year than marijuana. The money we spend on health care for alcohol and marijuana. Why? Why aren't those illegal? You know, they talk about marijuana being a gateway, gateway drug. 42 years I've never taken any drugs. Weed is not a drug, it's a plant. So why is it a Schedule 1 drug? It's, it's, all a, it's not a narcotic, it's not a addictive, it's, it has more benefits than negatives. And yet we're tied into this old 40s, 50s reefer madness mentality. I mean, there are studies all over that marijuana is beneficial. So what are we waiting for in the process? Why doesn't New Jersey have a referendum process where a citizen can go out, get signatures, and put them on the ballot for his fellow citizens to vote on? Why does it have to go through the assembly where the politicians are? You know they're only going to do things for their own benefit. And 
when I did go before the judge, when I, I got arrested last week, and uh, the judge, the first time I ever had a judge being apologetic to Judge Cole. And he even said, make sure you get my name right, because he thought I was going to write about it. Um, he was apologetic because his warrant made me miss 420. <laughs> <laughs> you know, on my holiday. And he said he didn't mean to do that, I should have went to court. So he wasn't apologetic about that, and I should have went to court. And I wouldn't have got arrested. I just went to court and said I don't have the paperwork. Because I didn't have the paperwork, I didn't go to court. Catch 22, it was my fault. I admit it, it was my fault. I didn't go to court, they issued a warrant. The police were happy to serve that. And there's rapists and murderers around. But we got weed man on some paper, let's get it. And that's what they did. They got, me, they got me at the DMV. I went to the DMV to take care of something and bam. The Trenton police were waiting for me. Got they can't put me in, in a cage without the jury consenting to it. And the last two times I went before a jury, they did not consent to it. That's why I'm calling out the prosecutor. In this case, don't send an assistant. Let him have the laws to do it himself. And let me beat him up with the jury. That's all I need. I only need one. Here in Mercer County, all the publicity that I've gotten in Mercer County over the years. Here's a quote. I believe in conviction. They ain't shutting us down. We ain't letting that happen. Anonymous. We man's joint.